Hello fellow engineers, welcome again. This is in continuation with our discussion for septum polarizer and right now we will be discussing part C of this particular three part septum polarizer video. And in part C what we are going to discuss is how exactly the septum polarizer along with the choke horn behaves. We have already seen in part A and B about septum polarizer that uh, it can separate circular polarization into two orthogonal components, right and left. But there are some resonances in the band. And I have already discussed that as soon as you connect your septum polarizer with the choke horn antenna, these resonances would greatly reduce. It's simply because whatever higher order modes are excited in the septum polarizer, they will get radiated out as soon as you connect a septum polarizer with the choke horn. And this we have to understand uh, properly and for that we have to do a detailed EM simulation. Because at the end, our goal is to get a very nice feed along with the septum polarizer so that we have very good aperture efficiency even for circular polarization for prime focus reflectors while keeping in mind radio astronomy as an application. So to do that what I have done now is actually I have modeled exactly the same septum polarizer which we have discussed in last two videos part A and B along with the choke horn which you have already seen in my earlier videos. And what we could do is actually use WIPLD Pro to, mo to model all these components together, that is the septum polarizer and choke horn, in one single electromagnetic problem. And then you could excite this particular EM problem by two discrete waveguide ports, what you could see here now. And then there is a right hand port and left hand port. You could also see the ridge of the septum and then the choke horn. So for this particular EM problem, we could either excite from right side waveguide port or we could excite with left side waveguide port. And if our design of septum polarizer and the choke on is everything fine, then if we excite from right hand port of the rectangular waveguide, most of the power should get radiated out, very less should reflect back to the port and ideally no power should go into the other rectangular waveguide port and vice versa. So with, with this particular fashion, what you could see by simulating septum plus choke on together first the S parameters, that is the reflection at right hand and left hand circular waveguide, circular polarization output, as well as the isolation between right hand and left hand polarization. That is first thing to observe and study carefully. Secondly, given this particular combination, what is the radiation pattern of the choke horn and how well is my cross polarization? Now, not in terms of linear X and Y, but in terms of right hand to left hand or left hand to right hand cross polarization. So this is what we are going to do now and I will do the simulations. I will bring the results for you and we will discuss the results in part C of this video. And hopefully by the end of video, you will believe that by using septum plus choke horn together, you could generate a really good circular polarization. So at first, let me bring the results and the results are basically S parameters. And these are already I have plotted on the screen. So the red line on this particular results is S11 either at right hand rectangular waveguide port or left hand rectangular waveguide port. While the blue curve is a transmission from right hand to left hand or left hand to right hand. Again, since septum is a passive device in terms of S parameters, as well as choke horn is an antenna, so it's reciprocal by its own nature. 
we will also have reciprocal S parameters. It means S11 and S22 will be identical as well as S12 and S21 would be identical. Now coming back to the theory in part A of this septum polarizer video, we said that if we have a good design, we should have really good matching for circular waveguide ports and very high isolation between the two. So by doing this particular EM simulation straight away looking at S11 we see that there is a really nice matching all the way from 1.04, 1.05 gigahertz all the way up to 1.6, 1.7 gigahertz at both rectangular waveguide circular polarization right hand and left hand port. While the blue curve straight away gives you the isolation between right hand to left hand or left hand to right hand or it gives basically the S21 parameter. So the, this means that if a really ideal right hand circularly polarized wave falls upon this particular horn, of course most of the power would end up in right hand port but some power would leak to the left hand port and how much that leak is it is given by s21 and it is at worst case it is of the order of minus 15 db it is not minus 30 db but minus 15 db is a good number considering the fact that we are going to design a really wideband septum polarizer here just take into account some practical numbers if you are using a rectangular waveguide Maximum bandwidth you could fetch is of the order of 1.5 S to 1 ratio. If you are using just circular waveguides, the number is even smaller because the circular waveguide has higher order modes which appear much more faster in frequency. And then about resonances. We have discussed in part A and B that there are some resonances in the, in the band, frequency band of interest because excitation of higher order modes due to the discontinuity of the ridge seen by the longitudinal polarization. So there are some resonances but their magnitude or amplitude has dropped down considerably and again around 1.3 gigahertz there is a higher order mode for circular waveguide which is used for choke on. There is some excitation of higher order mode and again around 1.5 gigahertz. So at this region there is slight increase in S21 and S11 but still looking at the numbers they are close to minus 15 dB and below. So practically these are good numbers. And look at the band between 1.04 gigahertz to 1.2829 gigahertz. Really good isolation close to minus 20 dB and below. Then the mid band about 1.3 to 1.5 gigahertz about minus 15 dB isolation and post 1.5 to 1.7 gigahertz again minus 15 minus 18 dB of isolation while the matching stays very close to minus 20 dB and below. So with this one could conclusively say that whatever septum polarizer design we have done is working great along with the choke on which which we have also designed. But this is just about the S parameters. So this is half the story. Since the whole idea is to use this particular combination as a feed for prime focus reflectors, we have to make sure that whatever radiation pattern we get out of this combination should have high circular symmetry and low cross polarization in terms of circular polarization now. It means if if the power is radiated, radiated in right hand polarization or by exciting right hand port, very less should get radiated out in left hand component of the far field of the antenna. And this is what we are going to do now. So what I will do, I will re-simulate this problem so that we can get the far field of this electromagnetic problem over complete sphere. And from that far field, we'll we will try to see how good this combination behaves in terms of polarization aspects. So stay tuned and I will bring those results for you. So what I have done now, 
that for the EM problem which you have seen in earlier video, I have simulated the same problem for the far field radiation pattern of the antenna. So in this case, the excitation is say from port 1 and we will see how the far field looks like or the excitation is from port 2 and how the far field looks like. And this is what you could see exactly on the screen below. But now there are few important observations to be made. So at first the frequency of this far field is 1.2 gigahertz and if you could recall the S parameters at this frequency there is a very good matching in as well as very good isolation. So we are looking at the total far field of this particular problem and there is a very nice circular symmetry in the radiation pattern really like a nice balloon. But now we have to decompose this field in terms of right hand circular polarization and left hand circular polarization component. This we could do I think in most EM simulations for antennas we could do that. So I have decomposed the right hand circularly polarized component of the field. And again there is a very nice circular symmetry in the radiation pattern. The maximum gain exactly in the broadside direction is about 10.54 dBi which is also a good number for uh, prime focus speeds. But most important how good this particular combination behaves for cross polarization. So let's check the left hand circular polarization component and it is computing now and it is already reduced to minus 6 dBi. This is an absolute scale. So if you could just take a ratio between maximum copolar to maximum cross polar, the left hand circularly polarized far field is minus 17 dB down as compared to the copolar right hand circularly polarized field. So in this way, Chokon as well as septum polarizer together can generate circular polarization. But this is at just one spot frequency and of course we want good performance over entire band. So what we could do is to check at some of those bad frequency points where we got some resonance type of behavior. So I will re-simulate this problem for those frequencies and we will look at the far field again. So let's change the frequency of this particular far field and now I will select 1.31 gigahertz where we have kind of bad matching and poor isolation. So I do that. First have a look at the total field. Total field appears still quite symmetric. There is some increased backlope level and the gain is also about 10 dBi so it is fine. If I decompose it to the right hand circular polarization component the gain has little bit reduced. It is 9.87 dBi. The pattern has kind of distorted. It's not extra it's really not strong change or strong distortion but there is some distortion at lower side lobe levels and have a look at the left hand component. It is 0.26. Now if I just take a ratio of maximum copolar to maximum cross polar, it is of the order of minus 9 minus 10 dB only. So one has to be very clear that if you want a broadband septum polarizer, it is doable. But there may be some frequencies, just two or three spot frequencies maybe 2 or 3 megahertz bandwidth which you have to spare for which you will have kind of distorted radiation pattern of the choke horn. And what this means in practice that when you will use this combination in a prime focus reflector as a feed at this particular frequencies there will be some drop in aperture efficiency. It would be small but there will be a drop. Nonetheless if we are if we think of circular waveguide technology and the bandwidth which we are talking about 
1.05 gigahertz to 1.6 gigahertz this step term polarizer design is really good it is broadband with a very small drawback that at few spot frequencies the performance is somewhat less than the other band where we have really good isolation and very good matching and also the cross polarization in most of the band will be really great only at those few frequencies where you will have kind of bad cross polarization for from right to left or left to right we could check one more frequency let's see quickly and we could wind up this video with that let's say classical radio astronomy frequency 1420 megahertz or 1.42 gigahertz there if you look at the total field about 10.6 dBi gain, nice rotational symmetry in the pattern. The right hand component, very close to 10.5 dBi gain, nice. And left hand, minus 4. So again, if we just get the ratio between right to left, it is of the order of 15 dB. With this simulations of far field as well as from the S parameters, uh, I think it is safe to say that by using a septum polarizer with the choke on, you could generate really nice rotationally symmetric far field for right hand and left hand. And in most part of the band, you will have at least 15 dB isolation in cross polarization as well as the isolation between right hand to left hand port or left hand to right hand port would be also of the order of 15 to 20 dB. And this is practically a good number and with that we could conclude the septum polarizer uh, as such in part which we have discussed in part A, B and it finishes with this part C and it would be really nice to have this type of septum polarizer with the choke on in full L band system for prime focus reflectors. I hope uh, with this uh, three videos on septum polarizer, you have uh, understood the theory behind septum polarizer, how it works, how it gets fabricated and its EM simulation. So with that, now we got our signal really into the coaxial cables. Also separated into two discrete ports, right hand circular polarization port and left hand circular polarization port. So next is to add amplification and amplification with low noise. So we have to start discussing low noise amplifiers from next video. So we have covered most of the passive electromagnetic simulations in earlier videos. Now it's time to look at active devices. And this is what we will try to start in next video. Till then, see you.